What's up guys and welcome to another Warcraft replay here. Uh, we have a just a best of one I believe. Um, game played I think th three days ago? Three days ago? Uh, on the 13th of February so uh, yeah it's been a while uh, I guess. Uh, it is going to be an undead versus orc matchup here on the map Tyranna stands. We have Lynn as the green orc player in the top left, and 1 2 0, the orange undead in the bottom right. I missed spectators a lot, honestly. Um, it's not every day where you actually like hearing multiple pinging noises uh, <laughs> for the only purpose to warm up with your APM and stuff. Uh, yeah, there's that. So, we are spared by the, the constant uh, pinging noise from either of these two players. I believe these two players do have pretty high APMs, so they would probably like to spam their pings. But uh, yeah, Blademaster first for Lin, and it should be a Death Knight first for 120, who will be going for a graveyard, so it seems to be a TED opening here. Up to uh, training up to three ghouls and then transitioning into crypt fiends and then starting tier two after about one or two I believe um, unless of course anything drastically different happens but I'm not too confident that it will happen so we'll just be going on to standard I believe Lin on the other hand um, has not placed down his barracks yet so I do remember some more players doing this, I don't exactly know why they do this, um, obviously they're not going to have any grunts whatsoever and they're going to have an extremely early tier 2, but against an undead matchup I would have assumed um, maybe grunts, maybe the barracks will be needed later on for like headhunters or something like that, but if it seems to be no uh, barracks I am kind of leaning towards double bestiary here and maybe going into wyverns because wyverns can at least um, cover the destroyer threat from 120 but um, that is a little weak to mass crypt fiends so I don't know exactly what Lin is going to be planning for but right now his blade mast has gone straight for harassment instead of going for a green creep camp uh, trying to bank on the first item instead he's going to be trying to maybe pick up some free experience, if not at the least he will be able to just um, stop 120 from actually uh, farming peacefully, so there is going to be that. Tier 2 has also been started for 120, it seems like he did forego that first crit fiend as the blade master has not shown himself with a grunt, so it doesn't really feel pressure to actually produce any units I believe, that is 120's mindset. and. Uh, Seems like the Death Knight is going to be uh, stuck at his main base, which is, uh, I'm not sure if it's ideal, but at least it keeps the Blade Master in check, and they just, they're just sitting right in front of each other. Um, oh, Death Knight going in for a little swing, but the Blade Master swings back. Uh, to be honest, there's actually nothing to actually comment about. Griffin does pop out for 1-2-0, and it is going to start free hitting the Blade Master. Uh, Blade Master doesn't, I don't believe, has too much kill pressure on the Crypt Fiend right now. No items, only Wind Walk, so not even a chance of critical, uh, critical strikes. So there's no real threat to the uh, to the Crypt Fiend's life there because the Death Knight also has a, a Death Coil as well. So like, yeah, like no real fear for one two zero. And right now, Lin is just taking a lot of damage on his Blade Master, but I guess at the same time, oh. Oh, very nice. Uh, I would say I would have called it a bait. I think Lin baiting the death coil there with the healing salve. I mean, as soon as the salve popped, one two zero thought I must, I must uh, interrupt it. And then as soon as he tosses the coil, nice wind walk to actually um, cancel it. So nicely done there. I still actually have no idea why um, you would be immune to coil damage if you go invisible. I mean, you still get hit to be honest. So. That thing kind of baffles me, but 
it was a nice play nonetheless. DK is going to be resuming creep camps. It seems like he is just going to pick up one, not even getting close to level two, unfortunately. But then again, the blade mess is still pretty far away himself. Uh, but I believe this is all according to Lin's plan here, as he does place down double bestiary. He also has the barracks as... I mean, how else does the grunt get there? Um, and the turn attack. chieftains popped out, so... Turn chieftain, pretty good answer to those crit fiends with either the stomp or uh, shockwave. And the double bestiaries, not sure if it's going to be wyverns. It seems like it's just going to be mass raiders. So that answers the question there. Mass raiders instead of mass wyverns. I guess that is a lot safer compared to mass wyverns because it really gets uh, destroyed by crit fiends. So, yeah, we'll see how Lin does it. A little worried about destroyer threat here because you need to ensnare, obviously, those destroyers. But, um, man, if he, if, if he gets it right, then I guess uh, destroyers won't be too much of a problem. Necropolis gets placed down, which is rather surprising. We have three ghouls, so technically 120 shouldn't be in supply um, not supply, uh, a lumber pro a lumber disadvantage or whatever, but he is placing down the necropolis. A player's forces are under attack. I'm assuming for supply purposes, I don't know if it's entirely true or not, because he's still pretty far away from, uh, 40 supply there, so. Necropolis is, uh, still underway, death coil onto the blade master to just push him away from that necropolis there, and it seems like it is just going to finish. Um, okay, it seems like uh, 120 is quickly using his food supply, and uh, I guess the Necropolis was, is just there attack. because he wants to save on Lumber, as I believe he's just going to uh, invest a lot of it on the Destroy upgrade and maybe something else, I have no idea. Lich comes out as a second hero for 120, meanwhile the Turn Chieftain has been about for quite some time already, I believe, matched up, uh, actually even surpassed the Blade Master in terms of experience, so, um, well, look at that, I guess, uh, Turn Chieftain will get level 2, and I believe the Blade Master will be a little shy of that, I, I think, not too sure, but we shall see, the Taskmaster is still there, so the big chunk of experience is still in play, Turn Chieftain should hit 2, and, uh, yeah, it seems like the Blade Master was a little short on that one. Full 15 second invuln has been picked up by the TC. I have no idea what the second ability is going to be. Shockwave or War Stomp. Um, but I am waiting with bated breath, I guess. Army supplies, I guess we could look at it. 43 for the Lin and 37 for 120. Uh, the second Necropolis is down. The Destroyer is on the way. And, uh... Yeah, I, I mean, it seems like the plans are, go are falling for both sides here. I mean, 120 is eventually going to get his destroyers up and running, and I mean, Lin hasn't really been challenged all too much, and he is sl slowly um, gathering up his raider threat here. I'm not sure if he's going to go into Berserkers, but seeing as he has the war mill and the fortress on the way, Players I believe Berserkers will attack. be making their appearance as well, so nice well-rounded comp for Lin. Uh, raiders deal with the uh, Crypt Fiends and ensnare the Destroyers, and then the uh, Berserkers will be able to deal with the Destroyers. So, um, that would be the plan for Lin. I believe uh, 120 is just gonna go standard, so, yep, we'll have to wait and see. Renegade Wizard gets taken down and level 2 has been gained for the Blade Master. He picks up the plus 6 claws, so that is an extremely good item for himself. Especially since he was uh, kind of, uh, I guess, uh, uh, abandoned, really. Uh, he had to sacrifice his early game just so that he can uh, ensure that this, I guess, mid-game happens. Slippers of Agility has been dropped here as well. That is an extra 3 attack for the Blade Master if he even cared. But it seems like uh, that is not going to happen. Death Coil able to claim the Renegade Wizard for the Death Knight of 120, and that makes him even closer to level 3 as another Raider falls as well. Um, I guess things are slowly, uh, slowly favoring 120's side here. 
able to catch his opponent um, pretty much in a bad situation and he is going to hopefully try and take advantage of this. Blade Master is still pretty low and there are no salves available so um, yeah that's going to be a little rough here. Three destroyers are on the way to try and uh, make something happen here. Only a couple of burrows are uh, placed down but one destroyer has a full mana bar and we shall see how much it can actually do. It is not going to stick around for uh, that one burrow. It seems the TP, the TP scroll was forced and that was um, yeah pretty good pressure for 1-0 honestly. I think Lin was actually thinking of uh, attacking and yeah he kind of bought himself some time. Now 1-2-0 is going to attack with his bulk army. Only a couple of crypt fiends available, but those destroyers are the main highlights here. It will do a lot of damage to those raiders, especially with that minus 5 armor debuff from the corruption orb. And here we go, battle stations should be uh, triggered I guess. Only one burrow has been stationed up. One burrow will fall, but it seems like a destroyer might get traded for it. Will we see a death coil? It seems like uh, it seems like it's not going to be enough as the blade master just crits it once again. TC goes for a shockwave, able to pick, uh, pick up one of those crit beams there, and the second destroyer is being focus fired. Constant ensnares onto the destroyers here, and another crit onto the destroyer. No mana for the de death knight, and that is going to be, I believe, pretty much all the destroyers taken down. So disaster. Uh, coming in for 1-2-0, and he is going to be forced to TP out. Yeah, that was a very big disaster for the undead player, losing all his destroyers and not really getting much in return. He got one burrow, but in exchange for all his destroyers slash statues, that was definitely not worth it. And the uh, I guess the predicament is, even if he goes frost rooms, that's pretty much the same weakness uh, that the destroyers have. They just get ensnared and then quickly focus down. So uh, I guess the, the main thing was that the Death Knight only had level 1 death coil and it just didn't heal enough and uh, yeah, a bit of a problem there but eh, what can you do? Uh, both sides just resuming to creeping out here. Level 3 on the TC and the Blade Master Shadow One pops out as the third and final hero for Lin, and he will pick uh, get level two as well. So hero advantage to the undead uh, to the orc player. Undead player is going to hire up the Dark Ranger, fresh and new, no experience whatsoever. Uh, level three Death Knight, level two Lich. Yeah, hero advantage definitely towards Lin here. His heroes are just a lot stronger, and by looking at the items, I mean plus th plus six int. Um, that's pretty good for the Shadow Hunter. Already claws and orb for the Blade Master. The the items are pretty much uh, in the Orc player's favor here. Kobold is going to get taken down and drop the Wand of Mana Stealing, so not too great, but I guess it will answer for uh, the Death Knight constantly out of mana. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Gonna go straight to crit that obsidian uh, statue. A little weird that Lin actually went for that, considering the armor was actually on it for... I mean, before he even decided to attack it, so like... That was a cheeky crit there from uh, Blade Master, but I guess... Doesn't really matter too much. And another plus six claws for the Blade Master, so Lin is getting rewarded very, very well and uh, might actually reward himself with an expansion, so we shall see. Level 3 has been gained for the Lich, the Death Knight is close to level 4, uh, although I guess level 4 doesn't really matter too much since it's a very, um, very minimal impact kind of uh, power point there. Blade Master going for the top right camp and uh, hoping for another damage item, honestly. I would not be surprised if it actually dropped considering Lin's luck, and he is going to get a plus 6 close, so uh, apologies about that, I actually did not imagine he, he would get another plus 6 close there, so he is already at plus 25, and that is without the Kodos, so I believe, um, I don't know if Warsong Baldrum, uh, Baldrums are upgraded, it seems like it is, so 20%. 
I have no idea. It's, I, I would say 30, but oh wow, 34. So that is a lot of uh, damage increase there. So yeah, that is a monstrous Blade Master. And he has a uh, invuln as well. So if he even if he gets burst down, he can actually survive and deal DPS for 15 seconds. Let's see how well 120 can handle a monstrous Blade Master, despite uh, the not so great early game for the Blade Master personally. But in the late game, he has uh, shown his luck here. Okay, uh, army supplies are currently at. Uh, that's that's technology, not army. 70 for 120, okay, okay. Uh, lots of units apparently for 120. I honestly can't see it. It's only four crypt beans, two destroy, uh, two statues, and one destroyer. Where is the remainder of his army? Oh, okay, it's gonna be a frost room. So <laughs> there, there's seven supply there. Uh, makes sense, makes sense. So 72 versus 63, almost a 10 supply advantage. It's slowly, uh, slowly narrowing the gap, I guess, for 120, but this looks like an all-in. All statues have been converted into destroyers. Frost room is out. Uh, plus zero plus one upgrades for the destroyers crypt fiends and frost rooms meanwhile uh lin only has plus one plus zero for his raiders and grunts so we shall see how well this actually uh, turns out we have an illusion on the frost room this so it might be able to eat something up shade is going to be uh shockwaved to death and here comes the berserk from the troll berserkers here Ensnare onto the frost room and here comes a scroll of protection. Uh, supplies are pretty even for both sides, but the blade master is being uh, is not being dealt with too well. Another ensnare onto the frost room here, being pulled back and is going to get shockwaved to death. Scroll of protection does not do very well against shockwaves, and that is definitely showing for Lin as the army has now been cut down to 51 supply. Lin is slowly encroaching and he has pretty much driven his opponent into a corner here. Uh, does have a TP scroll, but even if he does TP scroll, it's a little too late. The counter attack would just be able to finish things off. Destroyers are still alive, but they are constantly moving around, not dealing any DPS. And uh, yeah, Lin is slowly pushing his opponent back. Another crit fiend gets taken down there from, an ins uh, from a lightning purge. And that will be game, so... Um... Yeah, it, I mean, it's just very tough dealing with an orc army as an undead because most of your air, air units get pretty much invalidated by raiders and crypt fiends by themselves just can't cut, uh, can't make the cut. Um, I'm wondering whether or not abominations were um, needed, but I guess at that point it was a little too late. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will try and get one out over the weekend. Take care.